ready? It's fine. Right. Yeah. We'll try to dislocate, right? But obviously the ligament held. Well, I held it together. Right. <laughs> You're born with gold and we heal with copper. Huh. So the original <laughs> stuff was expensive like and it yeah. was actually difficult to injure. I feel like I look like you do. I know I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Your beard's more impressive. Yeah, we're yeah. <laughs> Chin up for me. There we go. All right. Mm. Beautiful. Singing like. I can't turn it off. <laughs> There's a blockade right here. That blockade has to. That's what he's getting stuck on. Tilt your head to the right. Hey, oh. <laughs> she heard it. Yeah, but so we were uh, we were practicing for a martial arts demo, and part of the part of the routine we were going to do is um, I did a kick over his neck. He ducks. And then he stands up and I roll off of his yeah, back. Yeah. So, you know, normal stuff. So, um, so I was in the process of doing that, kicked over, I readjusted, he stood up faster than I was ready to, so now I'm up, he stands straight up and I just kind of fell back on, onto my, onto my back, you know, broke my fall as, as we should, but it was in dirt, it was like on, you know, like slide right. of a hill, right. so. And then it, from there, it was just kind of, it was sore, it wasn't like, horrible but it was pretty it was sore I went to the doctor they told me I had full range of motion right except walk it all off, this yeah walk it off here's some Motrin and you'll be you'll be okay but it, since then he's been lingering this click in his shoulder just just real briefly just all right ready it's fine right yeah, we, it's we, fine what we, it's fine what we have there <laughs> and obviously your right one doesn't do that no right one does not do that no okay, see, so, yeah, see no clicks so <laughs> we have a trauma the ligaments that hold your shoulder, your glenohumeral joint together have been damaged. Those ligaments, and then they heal with a, a what do I say, substandard stuff called scar tissue, right? Mm -hmm. They're not, the original tissue, what do I say, has a organization to it. It's, it's lined up, it's organized, and then when it tears, it just goes back however it wants. It heals like that. So when you have your humerus in there, and as you're moving your shoulder around, which is enveloped in these ligaments, part of that scar is either not holding the joint where it's supposed to, and then you can actually rub it over a piece of bone, or... Now, if you keep... Obviously, I know you said you don't... You know, no, that's not saying yeah. that you're doing that all the time, which is good, because if you kept doing that, I imagine eventually the bone would grow. you get a bone spur, or, you know, maybe the cartilage would get worn out. Mm -hmm. So, the main thing that I was saying earlier, what I'm more worried... In terms of your length of your life, it's going to be more dependent on the lower neck. The trauma of landing like that and the alignment that you're in and then the force that went into your neck and how much that injured the joints or the discs in your lower neck, that's going to be what determines your life, not so much even the no, shoulder. Yeah. And so I'm going to, I'm really, I know you said you had a lot of burning, you had trouble sleeping. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that a little bit. Tell me. So mainly, you know, if I sleep with um, my arm under the pillow, right? you know, on my side or however, yeah. I can go to sleep like that. But then, I don't know, even doing this, I feel it. Even pulling. so, uh, yeah, I feel yeah. this just pulling it burns a little bit, and then I'll just wake up in the middle of the night because I'm like, oh, because I'm laying on my arm. Right. You know, just tell it to go back down here. And Do your hands ever go numb or tingly? Do you have any numbness? No. Okay. No. No numbness. No tingles in my hands. Um, Is there pain when you just move the shoulder around when you put your right arm? There's just that clicking. No. There's no pain. Yeah, just the clicking, just pain. I, I definitely, um, you know, on a level of a pain scale, say maybe like a one. Like I can feel it. Like right. I notice it's moving, okay. but it's not like a. Right. Uh, you know, like I can't do it pain, you know, like I was saying, it's mainly like if I had a book bag on or if I had, if I'm in the car right. and I needed to reach back behind the seat to actually like grab something, then it's that like, would cause a problem. Right. Like me doing this without actually grabbing something and moving around, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But if I actually grabbed and tight, then it would just kind of feel like it freezes the scars, up sore. The scars are the front there. Mm. That's where the, so when you got impacted back here, it, mm -hmm. it, see this pushed forward and then the front part of that ligament is where the bone tried to well tried to dislocate right, but obviously the ligament held. Well, I held it together. Right, <laughs> but it, it's it's that substandard. Now, what I do all the time with scars is they can't be ever completely gone away. I think of it like mm -hmm. a scar on your skin, right? You could show me mm -hmm. cuts from childhood. Yeah. Now they do over time blend. You can or maybe like a piece of road, right? You have a pothole and you patch it, and then you mm -hmm. can kind of blend it in with the original road. So. When we have an injury, your body kind of puts it on a back burner. It's like, oh, I'm going to get to that at some point later. And today we're going to shine a spotlight on it and try to bring mm -hmm. it up in the queue. The original 
ligamentous fibers when you're born are all organized like railroad tracks. You know, they would they would come through smoothly. It's that whole injury and then <laughs> then come back together. And now that's what you got. It's like well, it's not really stretching that well. Right? Well, yeah, it doesn't. So we're gonna try to make that look like that. That's the goal. I'll take it. Right? Something like that. You're born with gold and we heal with copper. Huh. So the original <laughs> stuff was expensive like and it yeah. was actually difficult to injure. The original stuff took a lot of um, abuse to finally get injured, like falling that significantly. Mm -hmm. it, and that's what it took to actually injure it and then create that perpetual click going on. Yeah, we're dealing with a significant forward head posture and that puts an immense, like look up for me. Yeah, I mean. There's, there is some creasing. I'm actually there's a little bit right there, but on the almost the primary crease right where that necklace is. That's where your neck bends, and that's where I'm worried about. Look straight forward. You know that's where all you actually you can see on his skin there. Like, right. That's where the, the the neck where the skin folds is where the vertebrae are folding underneath, mm. and it's like a piece of paper. If I all right, if I kept folding this piece of paper back and forth in the same crease, right, over and over again. Don't tear my paper, I swell that up. <laughs> Wait, you tear it, right? The point is that you could, you could tear this, you're weakening that crease by, or like a paper clip. If you keep bending a paper clip back and forth at the same spot, it's easy to just snap it. This model is not 100% accurate. I wish it was better, but they, notice it looks like a little, little butt. <laughs> it's called bifid, we call that. So the spines are, they're actually all bifid. And the neck, they like, look like that. They're all like that. They look like two spinuses in our neck, and they actually interlock. The, the top blade of the vertebra, the spinous, will actually interlock with the bottom part of that, and you actually can't rotate it. Because once it's, oh, yeah. When there's a curve in the neck, those are all interlocked together. And so it's not possible to overstress the joint or the discs in the lower neck. The main bone that moves is just the atlas, which is these top two vertebrae. So our skull sits on a, a round donut called the atlas, and that sits on a pin called the dens, and that's part of your axis and 60% of the work of your neck happens here. And so this is way before the injury. This is when you were five to 20, this was changing, right? The predominance of looking down, then the loss of curve fanned the spinuses and that allowed your lower neck to now be earlier in the game. The lower neck then when you have a fall and that's where your, the long-term health of you is going to be keeping the numbness out of your hands. Mm -hmm. That's that's be, be the main symptoms, and I'm glad we're not there. I'm glad mm -hmm. it's just, right now we have burning, which mm -hmm. is, Ed, this is getting abused. You know, this is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I'm not forcing myself. This is home for me, is that needs to be lined up. And your static posture is is the head in, it wants to be forward. I feel like I look like you do. I know I don't. <laughs> <laughs> your beard's more impressive. Yeah, we're <laughs> But um, you know, so we gotta we gotta get the head back, and then even even breathing. A very simple thing is you know, take a deep breath in, push your head forward, take a deep breath in. Now bring your head back as best you can. Take a deep breath in. Right, it's easier to breathe just with a little your, bit, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit, yeah, with your with your head back. And so very commonly, I tell people, you know, how important is breathing? Well, yeah, very. The goal of the adjustment is to, like I said earlier, to work on the ones that are tight without moving the ones that are loose. We're not trying to pop every single joint in your spine. <laughs> We're trying to. It's kind of like Jenga. Any two-year-old can knock the Jenga tower over. We're trying to move the pieces that are stuck without moving the ones that are loose. As a young chiropractor, when you're learning how to adjust, the first thing you learn how to adjust is the ones that are loose because they're easy it's to easy. move. We're trying to you know, balance. Take a deep breath in for me. Head back for me. Let all the air out. Exhale. There you go. There we go. Deep breath in. Head back for me. Exhale. There we go. There we go. A little tight there, yeah. I got you. One more. There we go. Good. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Got to get so that right. Yeah, you did great. You got to get, in order to get the head back, right, do you see how this has to go in? Mm -hmm. So we call this coupled motion biomechanically. The chest and the neck are not independent. They work together in terms of we can't get the head back <laughs> if this doesn't work in. Deep breath in. Exhale, it's okay. There you go, let it go. There we go, yeah, a little tight. Yeah, other side for me. So we can loosen this middle back here a little bit. Yeah, okay, good. Exhale. Uh -huh. There we go, face up for me, very good. Uh -huh. Have you been worked on before? No. Okay. 
Ever? Never been worked on by a car? Okay. All right. Yeah, what are you doing later this afternoon? That's <laughs> right. Well, I'm be here a while. All right. Well, I flew all the way down here. Got to get, we have to, get, have to give our sampler or something. Yeah. Jeez. She's like, oh, can't, well. can't, can't come all this way and not get at least an appetizer or something. All right. Let me just focus here first. All right. Mm-hmm. I mean, notice your atlas here. I got a real strong wing of your atlas here on the left. Mm-hmm. You know, it's right there, but it's, it's definitely more prominent on the left. You know, the top bone is sitting off to the left-hand side. Again, this is injury and then compensation. Your body tries to find a more comfortable position. So let's just see how it moves here. Brandon. I got you. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Give me mm. a second. Yeah. We'll yeah that's, that's wonderful. Chin up for me. Here we go. All right. Mm. Beautiful. So the TMJ actually is jammed. The more forward your head goes, your temporomandibular joint will be inflamed, jammed, because of the forward head posture. The muscles jam that joint. So clicking in the jaw, inflammation in the jaw is usually relieved in addition. It'll be coming out your ears. Everything's due to forward head posture. <laughs> is there anything forward head posture doesn't come? It, it, it's pretty much the reason why I exist. The forward head posture, loss of cervical curve creates a pretty large paradigm of problems and yeah wow like right here yep yeah mm. all right feels great <laughs> but it definitely feels like it probably shouldn't feel that good because it needs it mm. yeah we gotta make your default want to be back here that's your first goal is mm. becoming normalized and used to having the arch in your spine we're born with our thoracic primary curvature our thoracic I used to think in school primary must be more important and secondary. It's not what it means. <laughs> secondary just means it happens after birth. Mm. So we're not born with our neck arch, our lordosis, or our lumbar lordosis. Those are developed in the first year of life. Mm. They're developed after birth, so that's why I call them secondary curves. Uh, there is tertiary it's scoliosis in your teenagers, but yes, that, that's a side note. But the um, secondary is is the front to back curves that are the neck and the lower back curves that are formed. Right now, your neck is so we would say foreign to this position, right? So we're today's an yeah. introduction to curve. <laughs> what do you, I'm just trying to distract wow. you while I get your neck used to being in a position it's not used to being in and coercing and holding its hand and we're walking this way. <laughs> Come with me, <laughs> right. <laughs> we're going across the street and It's like our two year old. <laughs> then we mold here. Yes, then my we, neck is your two year old. Once, <laughs> right, once, once, <laughs> <laughs> once we get it loose, then we cast, and then yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It needs coercion. It's not. It's not just gonna. It's like broccoli, you know, for a two year. Like, Eat it. Yeah. You know, it's not. Oh yeah, it's, some kids, but not that often. You know, most you're gonna need to push them a little bit, and um, because the joints have feeling, and it's it's a little sore. I feel stuff. It's uncomfortable, you know. But if the more weight that's on the joint means the less weight we take off the disc, and the disc is ultimately all back surgery is defined by that cartilage, mm. all of it. Well, no, Dr. Red, the bone spur hit the nerve. The bone spur would have never reached the nerve if the disc was healthy, right? So the, the thickness of that cartilage, you'll have these bone spurs, you know, growing into the, but the, the only reason that bone spur hits the nerve is because the disc's all sandwiched, right? So it's all predicated on the disc. All right there, wow. We don't know if we're using them correctly. We have them. <laughs> <laughs> The house looking like I used to get this massive thing. Your neck is getting this purple. Your back is it's going to be bad, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so every inch the head goes forward, the muscles double their workload. Head weighs about 10 pounds, 10, 20, 40, 80. You know, it's, mm. you're, you're between 40 and 80. The spec rating was 10 pounds. That's what the yes. muscles were designed to hold. Just an overachiever over here. <laughs> right. So you got them doing four to eight times, somewhere in there, what they're supposed to be doing, right? And they're not going to be very happy with that, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't... This is great. I'm supposed to work a two-hour shift. I'm working yeah. a 20-hour shift. <laughs> no overtime. Yeah, I will say when... Um, Mm -hmm. So a lacrosse ball is mm -hmm. wonderful. I just lay on the ground on dig it in there yeah, and just dig it in there. And yeah. so sometimes I would have her, you know, push on it. And I'm like, oh, can you push on my back? She's like, I am. I was like, oh, <laughs> I did. <laughs> 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 
stand on it? Jeez. <laughs> like I said, there's two parts of your treatment. Vacuuming and then take your shoes off the door. Yeah, that's, <laughs> just, those both have to go together. We're not only, this is me cleaning. I'm cleaning. Yeah. Stain removal. The goal with the gua sha is very simple. You should be able to comb the tissue and all you get is pink. You know, a, li a light flushing of the tissue, not that. Yes. <laughs> not what's happening. Not currently. what's happening. Under <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your neck. Oh my goodness. Wow. Right. I mean, there's a lot. Well, give me a second here. <laughs> Come on, you, you just wait. Yeah, you just wait. There's a lot in here. Um, wonderful treatment, if possible, would be the Gulf, the Gulf of Mexico if it's not too, I think it's pretty warm out there. My point is you get in salt water or just a salt bath would be fine if you want a couple cups of salt. It can draw this right through your skin, either through mm. sweating or salt bath will cause the um, an osmosis or an osmotic event. So you're causing a sweating and then with the sweating you're taking out all the acidity that's been trapped in here. Mm. And um, it doesn't really work if you don't stir it up. It's like a pool. If all the sediments at the bottom of the pool, the skimmer and the filter can't get it. You have to go in and shuffle your feet to stir up all the, that's what this is. You're going in and sh shuffling. He's moving things around. Getting it, well, getting it into the water so now it can be filtered out. That's, the, the filter is your liver, but your liver only filters your blood. It doesn't filter the interstitial of the muscles. It only can filter what's in the vascular system. So by doing this, you're vascularizing the tissue, which now you're aware of it. It's going to be like going to the gym and doing a big workout, and then you know I tried to impress my girlfriend's time. You know, yeah. She did this a lot. And then the next day I couldn't couldn't even brush my hair. I was like, <laughs> right. I mean, I did. I put the brush like here, and I was like, it's like it's fine. <laughs> That's the key to a girlfriend is having big forearms. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to work these puppies out, right? And then the next morning I was like. <laughs> I was like, uh oh. I was like, I can't lift my arms. <laughs> I, think I, I think I did too much. I'm walking to class and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> the forearm wasn't working. <laughs> right? But, you know, you're out of shape, Ed. You know, okay, fine. But, you know, I was like, you tried. You know, you, know, you know. tried. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you wake up in the morning, your alarm's like busting. Like, I can't turn it off. <laughs> I'm having trouble hitting the button. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, this is back when we had a lawnmower exactly before. Yeah, jeez. Uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> Looking at the gap. Okay, feels good. No. It's definitely anteriorly rotated. Gee whiz. I mean, it got a big prominent part of your foot, part of your humerus here. That's what I saw too. Yeah, this is... This <laughs> I was thinking the same yeah, thing. I was thinking the, sure, I'm saying. I just didn't want to tell you. Yeah, I wanted you. Know, <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to see. Yeah, I was just wanted to see. All right, he's legit, guys. No, he's, he's legit. He knows what he's doing. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's clean this out. Mm, yeah, definitely feel it more right, right in there. there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel it. Yeah. Medical doctor's a patient. He told me his shoulders were hurting after surgery. I was like, okay, let me work on your shoulders. And after I worked on his shoulders, he's like, Ed, that's that's some legitimate work here. I was, like, I was, I was ready to cry. <laughs> so I thought the back was bad until he. Mm -hmm. Are you crying? No, just blur out my face. <laughs> <laughs> no, something got in my eye. <laughs> yeah, there's a significant amount. Have you tried this on the shoulder? Have you gua sha this ever? No. I have not. Okay, just the neck. Mm -hmm. Okay, got you. Good. Okay, well, just like I said this. This can be more. You know, I've done my own. <laughs> you, yeah. you can kind of get your own. It's hard to do your own neck, but the sometimes the shoulder I've worked on. I've I've sprained my shoulder countless times just working on patients or adjusting, and so I catch me just just, just, just sitting at home on the couch. Right, just, just finding the yeah. spot, and yeah, you can anything on the backside. Yeah, Carl, help me. The difference between arteries and veins is arteries have three layers. 
veins have two layers. There's a thing called a tunica interna and a tunica externa on a vein. Mm -hmm. uh, artery has an interna and externa and a media. So it looks like a hamburger. <laughs> two pieces of bread, piece of meat in the middle. That's, just that's the muscle. Okay. So the, that's what controls your blood pressure is that muscle that controls our vasoconstriction dilation of the arteries. That's your blood pressure and also pushing blood in these areas. So the tissue is going to become self-cleaning by that muscle that's in the artery getting stronger. Right, so part of what's happened is it's not a skeletal muscle, so it's not like you know, oh yeah, my muscles are shrinking. But that muscle in the artery, because of the tightness in your shoulder, has weakened, okay. and it's no longer able to circulate blood in these tight, injured, knotted up areas. So part of releasing the tension in the area not only is it easier for the muscle to push blood into a less pressurized area, but that muscle strengthens by it being mm -hmm. stimulated. So what you're doing with the gua sha is you're stimulating the tissue nourishing the tissue to allow it to strengthen itself so that it can become ultimately self-cleaning. Um, we call that imbibition. The tissue imbibes fluid and washes itself, or more simply, is the motion is lotion. <laughs> the tissue washes itself through mobility. Mm -hmm. My opinion is if we get the shoulder back more, your mm -hmm. ability to get it so far forward to make it click is going to be harder mm -hmm. because your static position is it's forward. Mm -hmm. So then it's not hard for you to... <laughs> Yeah. Click it because it's right there all the time. But if your shoulder was back where it's supposed to be, you doing regular motion, it's not going to click here. It will if you shove your shoulder all the way I'd forward. You really have to try. And then you really have to try, and you could probably get it to click <clears throat> again. But we need to, your shoulder is not where it's supposed to be. We need to get the shoulder back in the, in the what we call the glenoid fossa, in the center of the cartilage where it belongs. What other muscles? You did Taekwondo for two years? What else? Or how many years? How many years? Oh, um, we that. yeah, I went who knows how many years. I mean, I started um, in like Hapkido okay. and stuff like that. Then went into Taekwondo. Taekwondo was my longest, and I went through second degree wow. uh, yeah. black belt, so I was doing that for a while. Um, and, you know, was, we're always doing demos and gotcha. putting our bodies through it, which was great. It was fun. It was fun growing up doing that. And then you know, now I stretch, I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like now I notice things. Did you tell them that you have a black belt in Taekwondo? Yes, yeah. no, I didn't tell them. But again, I, you guys that's, how I, that's how we met. We tried to kick each other. That's <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a few like each other. <laughs> I know all about when he, when he was saying, like, expos, I'm like, I've been there to those. You know, it's like, here's an apple on my head, and kick yeah. it off with a back spin yeah. kick. Yeah, I mean, it was days where we would go. Yes. Uh, I remember like going to, we did a lot of like schools. Yes. So we'd go to like a middle yes. school on a on a uh, auditorium, you know, just a yes. wood stage. Just a national just, thing, huh? Yep, just throwing ourselves on the ground. You know, Jeez. I mean, kids are just do repeatedly coming in all do day. Do martial arts do this? Is this just an attack no, with thing? I think we just need to show off. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sure the, you know, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu are like, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, why are you doing that? <laughs> they're called poomsays. You mean the, yeah. the dances? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, it's a poomsay. <laughs> it's totally a form, good. okay? It's, it's totally yeah. legit and awesome. Everyone does it. <laughs> it looks like a dance. Yeah. <laughs> You're a dance. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like the best that we can say, and then we just go finish our dance. <laughs> A lot less coming out of here. There's some, but definitely you can see the, the difference from the right to left. This is extra. That's all the extra stuff that's yeah. been. Let's go face down for me. Are you ready? How long do you guys know each other? How long have you guys been married? Or? Uh, you should know this again. just went nine years. Nine years? Nine okay. years we've been married. Nine years married. We've been together for like 15. Know each other for 15, 15, 15, yeah, 15 years. Know each other? Okay, very cool. Very cool. Okay, we're, we're approaching 16 and we've known each other for 18 years. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Wow, yeah, that's just, that's just gonna need some passes right there. It's resistant. There we go. Nobody's ever found this spot right here? Nobody's ever, I'm just curious, no, nobody ever, okay. Nope. I mean, it's, 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 I'm walking into a room and there's a literal elephant sitting there on your couch, like. <laughs> like, hang on. It's just distraction. We gotta distract. This is a wow, Ed. There's 
Oh, there's some difficulty in there. We gotta sift through. All right. All right. Even your ability to bring your shoulder blade back is dependent on this going in. So part of it is that the ribs here have popped up. <clears throat> That's kind of when your arm gets stuck also is not only the injury in your shoulder, but this is presenting a lot of resistance to even getting your shoulder back. Mm. This has to be able to go in to be able to retract your scapula over this area. And so is it that this shoulder compensates for... Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely the other a one being level of... This area is going to be... You're going to wear out your right shoulder because the left one's been injured. And, yeah. To me, you're on right abuse, left, left old injury and stiffness, and then compensatory injury if we don't tell the left side to not be avoided. Part of when he brings his shoulder back, he's running into this monster here. You're getting you're getting hinged on this. You're getting mm -hmm. stuck on this. Right there is. And I can't get my arm out from behind my back now. It's uh, it's it's, <laughs> it stays there. it's stuck there now. <laughs> right, you're getting right there. It's Baby right. steps. Part of it is that <clears throat> these guys are losing a tug of war battle with the pec. So the pec, because the shoulder went forward, the pec's pulling the shoulder forward, these muscles pull the shoulder back, these guys lose. <laughs> They're losing the tug of war, they keep falling in the mud. <laughs> the pec keeps winning and pulling. Mm -hmm. The pec is just a, a more dominating, domineering upper torso muscle and so you know, this pulls your shoulder back, right, the pec pulls your shoulder forward and so these guys are losing. So I'd imagine, like you talked about, most um, like shoulder stuff now is probably from cell phone use or being on a computer, right. leaning forward and compensation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, your body is now going to just seek the most comfortable position, antalgia, right? So we have injuries, and then your body over the last 20 years is just nope, don't go in that room. It smells. It's got broken glass. Let's go over here, <laughs> right? So it's just it's now just journeyed to a place of. And that's why your head's so far forward and why, you know, there's all this mechanical tension down here. And yeah, this doesn't want to... There's a blockade right here. That blockade has to... That's what he's getting stuck on. Okay. There it is. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yes, Ed. I talked to myself a lot. <laughs> Just like that, Ed, yes. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Ed. Good Thank job. you! <laughs> Motivational speaker to yourself. Uh, way to go, Ed.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've hidden a lot in there. So that's, that's what I'm say. Getting rid of the guarding and now more bones moved, right? So we got rid of easy ones to move and now some of that protection has gone away and now more showed up. Same where the edges. Hands on the floor. <laughs> come on for me, come on for me. Ooh, I got Yeah, everything does. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're in heaven right now, aren't you, honey? Yes. <laughs> I live here now. traction if you can it's you know every other way he pops his knuckles tell him it's bad <laughs> you know, he goes to, you know, just just straight traction he's allowed to do sorry <laughs> we can, this is this is good for the joints to straight you know, traction them it gets it's lubricant in the joints and there we go freeze up any adhesions and then I want you to press back with your elbow here keep pressing back keep pressing back right here Press back with your elbow. There we go. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah. He like it. I'm just making sure it's still in place. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, where's it work? <laughs> now I'm, I'm like you. <laughs> I can't feel it. And you were going to say to him, hmm? you're a one handsome man. Oh, so yeah. Good. <laughs> You're a beautiful man. <laughs> so good. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Good. There we go. Tilt your head to the right. There we go. <laughs> she heard it. Oh man. Okay, go ahead and tilt left now. Go ahead and tilt left. Okay, good. Alrighty. Yep. And then leg straight from here on this one. So this is the curve. This is just a. I don't have a bottle of Dr. Ed. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, Ed. Get out here. Little genie bottle. You know, all we have is is these retainers, and so they don't have the power to get things moving if they're frozen, but they can keep things moving once they're moving. And this is where your neck belongs. As as awkward as it maybe you might not feel natural. If it does, it's you know probably don't need to use it. It's going to feel unnatural a little mm -hmm. bit, especially as you get closer to 20 minutes, and your neck conforms to the mold. The force that went into your shoulder went into your neck, and that injury is more, way more, like ten times more impactful to your long-term health. It's always the spinal column. What determines people's longevity is the health of their spine, because that affects your heart. Like I said, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, your thyroid, your shoulders. You know, it's its own entity. Yeah, no, I like know. all those things better than my shoulder. Right. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think about like you know the the dis the distillation of you is your brain and spinal cord, right? I have a woman right now, she's in her 70s. She has another woman's heart, right? Wow. They have a heart transplant. You know, you can have a liver transplant. You can have, people have prosthetic legs. I mean, what, how much of me could be removed before you lose me 
And the answer is brain and spinal cord is the essence of you. If we just work on this, you'll reach a wall whereby you actually can't go farther because this has to go in. Do you, what position do you typically sleep in? Now, like this. Oh, well, no. <laughs> no! On my Are stomach. You, your stomach's mm -hmm. Yeah, it's difficult. It's going to be part of why, that's why I figure you're on your stomach, is that that's avoidance. You're, you know, his back's not comfortable, side's not comfortable because of his shoulders, mm -hmm. and so the stomach is now where... Easy. Well, right, and so you're... What we're going to be weaning you off is that. We need to get you comfortable on your back. But because all that inflammation's in his back, that's what he's desiring to get away from. All that inflammation back here is hurting. And when you're on your back, you're confronting it. And so it's like, no, no, thank you. I'm going over here. We can't sleep. So I don't, I don't blame you. But your care would, you know, if you lived in Sarasota, and I'm saying that would be the process is weaning you off that. We need to get comfortable on your back to make it to 90. Uh, when you turn your neck past 45 degrees, the curve in your neck goes completely straight. Mm -hmm. So if you have your, if you're, if you're sleeping with your head at full lock, this is useless. You see what I'm saying? Got it. You're, you're stretching the curve out of your spine. So any curve we put into your spine is going to be stretched out. Sleeping, the secret with sleeping is not being rotated more than 45 degrees. So somewhere between here and here, you're allowed to be. Can't be on your side. If you're, if you're mm -hmm. tilted past that, you're straightening. The curve has to straighten. And then if you're sleeping in that position, then you're stretching it straight. Put the feet together, knees together. Rotate your knees left. Stretch. Exhale, exhale, stretch. There we go. Good, good. Breathe. Breathe in. Always on the exhale, try to move. So, so breathe in and then exhale. Good. Now I need you guys to keep No, no, no apple. Put the apple here. <laughs> 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 Awesome, but yes, thank you so much. All right, come on.